Hello, I'm Manuel. This is uh, this is weekly review of week two of the Understanding Language MOOC fourth edition. Hello, Steve. Hi, my name's uh, Stephen White. I'm a PhD student in web science at the University of Southampton, and I'm also a teacher of English for academic purposes and study skills with a background in teaching face-to-face -face and online and also materials development. So, thank you for all the comments uh, in this week. There have been a total this week of 4,500 4, comments and there's also been 25,000 comments in total in the course. There are many people coming uh, new, coming to week one in this second week of the course and you, you, yes of course you are most welcome to join the course at any point in the course as long as it's open so the four weeks of the course where, where when it runs you can join even the last day if you wanted to uh, there's a total of 3500 commenters in the course and yeah we encourage you to post your comments and and get more of these social learners um, be, there's a total of Six uh, six thousand three hundred learners in the course so far, and uh, congratulations to those who have finished the course already. There have been uh, we're only with two, but there have been more than three hundred fifty people who have finished the course, and you are all entitled to get your statement of participation. Um, and then I want to make a note about last week. Uh, do you remember Romiana Slavakova, yeah. the professor who was featuring mainly in, 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 in week one, talking about second language acquisition? Well, she has released a book, uh, it's called Second Language Acquisition, and it's in Oxford University Press, and if you buy it from their website, from Oxford University Press, uh, you will get a 30% discount. Sounds like a good deal. Yeah. Um, this, uh, this week, uh, Steve, anything to highlight? Yeah, there's been a lot of activity on the subject of classroom culture. Mm -hmm. uh, lots of activity and interest, so thanks very much for all that. Uh, and there's been, uh, participants have been explaining their, their teaching context, and there's a really wide range of teaching context and purposes of the classes, and also lots yes. of different learner groups. Mm -hmm. So that's a really valuable aspect of this course, to bring mm -hmm. teachers and learners from very different contexts together. Particularly, we had one uh, comment from Nora Jacobo, whose learners range between 12 years old all the way up to 60 years old. So a really big range of learners well, there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, and this was similar to another comment from uh, Roseanne Wills, who was dealing with teenage learners and explained how she was trying to use different activities and technologies in the classroom in order to engage these, these teenage learners, but actually found a mixed degree of success in that and, and uh, different reactions from, from different learners, not all positive. And this brings us to the subject um, of interest to me as a web scientist of um, a theory by Prensky, who had the idea that uh, you can divide people into digital natives and digital immigrants mm -hmm. and this theory states that young people actually learn differently than older learners uh, because they've grown up with, with certain technology. But this theory has been widely criticised or disputed as well and we had a discussion of that and uh, we've posted some links to, yeah. to those ideas. Do you remember last week when we were talking about the factor of age and it generated a big debate as well? So yes. age is always uh, quite contentious, isn't it? Yes, so, it really is. Yeah. Yeah. So we've got some, some mm. more links about that subject. Mm. Um, and uh, on the subject of classroom culture, we had the, the Padlet task, which I think really helps to build a sense of community among teachers on this course, and a really good one, Manu. Yes, yes. Uh, thank you very much for all those uh, photos of these lo lovely classrooms. And uh, we, we are all very interested in seeing the different settings and the different setups that you, that, that, that you have, uh, the different layouts as well, that you have, uh, that you have shown us in, the, in this Padlet. And, Thanks a lot as well for not showing the faces of the children in, this, uh, in, in these photos because we are very keen on maintaining their privacy. Mm, yes. Of course, yeah. Um, 
about naturalistic language learning. This is another topic that was uh, another topic that was quite popular. We got like 350 comments only in one step yeah. talking out whether we what's better naturalistic language learning in the classroom or or class uh, a more classroom based approach. Mm -hmm. Well, um, I would like to highlight a, a comment by Dave Wallace who has sparked a huge conversation which uh, which we will post the link because uh, we would like you to participate in that conversation and David says basically that yeah naturalistic language learning is great but if you want the language the natural language to flow in a classroom it's very difficult because there will be many errors that will impede this so we need to we need to have uh, to take into account some uh, some uh, some techniques and, and, and strategies of error correction as well. So all the error correction uh, topic came up in this conversation and I would like you to participate in that one. And we, we, I will post a, a, a link on that. But anyway, the, the, yeah, most of you are very, very keen on, on uh, well, many of you are very keen on, on, on naturalistic language learning. There's even someone, uh, some, some, someone who said, uh, it's what, yeah, Raquel Thompson, who says naturalistic language learning is uh, the Nutella of the classroom toast. <laughs> yeah, and Joe Dixon, Joe Dixon, one of our facilitators, uh, likes very much this uh, this quote. Yeah, the quote of the week. <laughs> quote of the week. Yeah. The quote of the week. Um, anything else? Yeah, there was a lot of activity about task-based language teaching, TBLT. Yes, yes. yes. Um, we've seen some great interpretations of the picture task on mm. step 2.10. Mm. Um, and a good simple suggestion just to add two empty boxes at the end mm. of the task so that the learners can fill in and continue the story and mm. really engage with the story themselves. Mm. There are lots of other great suggestions on, on using tasks in classrooms and that's one of the big advantages of a course like this with lots of teachers on it to share your ideas and share resources, links, anything that you can. Yeah, look at them, look at them because yeah. I'm learning right now from them and, I, and, I'm, and I'm getting all these suggestions and Exactly, and it's important to use the the like button in the in the forums uh, to help uh, show people which uh, of the discussions are most popular, and then you can use the most liked filter button in the discussions to help you find the the, the conversations which are most popular or interesting. Um, and this kind of sharing is, is, as I said, a major benefit of the course. Um, there were also, on the other hand, uh, comments about how there seems to be for teachers a constant stream of new methods being handed down to classroom teachers to use over time. And these sort of come out as trends or fashions in teaching and mm. which ones are really valid. And this has been recognised in, in research uh, and been termed some, something called the approach cycle where methods change over time as, as values and uh, uh, social activities in, in wider societies change over time mm. um, and we've posted uh, in the discussion forums I use this this article but I'll post a link to a, a good article by Scott Thornbury um, who discusses the post method condition and other relevant topics to that subject how can I find that that link will be included with the other links we mentioned today at the bottom of this video step on the platform in yes too and also if you follow us you can see our comments feed and from there you can find the link as well. Exactly, yeah. Please use those features of the discussion forum to help you get the most from the discussion forums because we know there's a lot of comments in them. So that's about it for us this week. Yes. Uh, next week is technology in learning and teaching and mm -hmm. something that we're both very interested in. So yep. hopefully we'll see you there and I hope you enjoy next week. Bye. Bye-bye.